Good afternoon. Thank you for joining the Connected Care, What Nurses Should Know About Chronic Care Management, presented by the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, the Health Resources and Services Administration, as well as the National Association of Hispanic Nurses. We have a few logistical reminders for you. This webinar is being recorded, and we will also uh, make the presentation available after this webinar. This will be an interactive discussion, and we want your input. There will be time after the presentation for questions and discussions. We also believe that your feedback is important. And so after this presentation, we will have a few questions for you to answer to help us understand your needs, how we can better serve you, and also to learn more about what your interests are. There will be a Q&A period. Feel free to share questions and comments in the chat window, which is on the right side of your screen. You can do this throughout the presentation. Towards the end of our discussion, we will have a Q&A period where you'll hear from many of our speakers. This presentation is also closed captioned. You can access real-time transcription of this event. For technical assistance, please contact GoToWebinar at 855-352-9002. We'll also be monitoring the chat window to see if there's anything we can do to help you. With that, I'd like to do a quick overview of our agenda for today. We will be discussing the burden of chronic diseases, going into more detail about chronic care management services, and then talking about connected care and the resources to support you and your community. We'll then have a question and answer session. I'm delighted that we have some fantastic speakers here today. We will hear from Annabelle Castro Thompson, President of the National Association of Hispanic Nurses, Michelle Oswald, Program Management Manager, Connected Care Campaign at the CMS Office of Minority Health. We'll also hear from the field, Lauren Field, Chief Coordinated Care Officer from the AR Care Kentucky Care. Allison Castleman will also be speaking with us, and she is a Project Director and Community Health Coordinator at the Paris. Henry County Healthcare Foundation. We'll also hear from Beth Chalet Kaplan. She's a CMS Office of the Regional Administrator. And my name is Monique Laroque. And now I present to you a brief discussion on the burden of chronic disease in the United States. Thank you. My name is Annabelle Castro Thompson. I am president of the National Association of Hispanic Nurses. I am a, new, a nurse practitioner by profession with extensive expertise in integrating concepts of care related to access to care and cultural competence in healthcare delivery. And so it, it is uh, my privilege to be part of this webinar and to tell you a little bit, give you a broad overview of chronic diseases and then narrow on a, on specifics of the Hispanic community to give you a greater sense of what this webinar is trying to accomplish. And so very well, um, a, a little bit about chronic disease burden in the United States. According to the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention, about half of the adults in the United States have one or more chronic health conditions. And this may be conditions such as arthritis, heart disease, and diabetes. As we know, chronic disease is prevalent among Medicare beneficiaries, with two-thirds of beneficiaries having two or more chronic conditions. And having multiple chronic conditions increases a person's risk for poor health care outcomes, including mortality and functional decline. And this oftentimes leads to an increase in health care spending and not necessarily a a correlated with the best outcomes. Nearly one in five Americans lead, live in rural communities across the United States, and therefore they face very unique healthcare challenges. In particular, this is demonstrated in access to care, both in terms of resources and access to clinicians. It also translates to higher burden of chronic conditions 
and a larger percentage of uninsured populations. Next slide. The Hispanic community is the fastest growing demographic in the United States, and therefore it is an important market to focus on. As we engage in healthcare transformation, we institute care coordination and improve on self-care management. Hispanic Medicare beneficiaries have increased prevalence and in incidence of diseases such as hypertension, diabetes, and depression as compared to non-Hispanic whites. In 2014, a study by Medicare also documented disparities in the medical management of common conditions such as blood pressure management, hypercholesterolemia, and hemoglobin A1C levels. You can view the statistics and the disparities within the body of this slide. Next slide, please. From a Hispanic perspective, care delivered is not always care received. As a result, Hispanic Medicare beneficiaries report more difficulty and dissatisfaction with the healthcare system they receive. Hispanic have increased reporting of not having a usual source of care, so they lack a medical home. They have trouble getting the care they need at the time they need it. They delay seeking care due to cost and lack of affordability in our healthcare system, and they report being dissatisfied or very dissatisfied with the quality of care. Another study of 260,000 Medicare beneficiaries shows that Hispanic participants report more often lacking medical records, relevant information about their care, and their doctor does not have the pertinent information. They experience greater difficulty getting timely follow-up on test results and they receive less help managing their disease. One conclusion is care coordination and the use of care managers and care coordinator is a, key, is a key strategy that has the potential to improve the effectiveness, the safety, and the efficiency of the healthcare system. Moreover, culturally effective and well-organized and targeted care coordination programs have been shown to reduce unnecessary acute care utilization and improve healthcare outcomes. When possible, these programs should be implemented as an overall strategy for treating the Hispanic community. Next slide. Thank you. The National Association of Hispanic Nurses is committed to providing access to educational, professional, and economic opportunities for Hispanic nurses. We are committed to improving diversity in the profession so that we mirror the population that we serve. In addition, NON is focused on improving healthcare delivery to our communities. NON strongly advocates for a more affordable, accessible, and equitable healthcare system for all. Again, I'd like to welcome everyone to this webinar, and I invite you uh, to visit our website for the National Association of Hispanic Nurses for more information on our specific initiatives. Thank you. Thank you, Annabelle. And now we'll hear from Michelle Oswald of the CMS Office of Minority Health. Thanks, Monique, um, and thank you, Annabelle, for that important information on chronic disease burden among uh, Hispanics in the U.S. We really do appreciate this collaboration today with CMS, HRSA, as well as the National Association of Hispanic Nurses. And good afternoon, everyone. So today I'm going to provide you with an overview of chronic care management services for Medicare beneficiaries, as well as our new Connected Care campaign. So I'm sure that many of you on this call may be familiar with chronic care management services, but as background, chronic care management is defined as services provided by a physician or non-physician practitioner and their clinical staff per calendar month for patients with multiple chronic conditions. These are timed services of at least 20 minutes per month and are typically non-face-to-face -face care coordination services such as monthly phone check-ins with the patient, managing referrals to other clinicians, 
or reviewing medical records or test results. CCM is person-centered and requires more centralized management of patient needs and coordination among practitioners and providers. Next slide, please. In 2015, Medicare began paying separately under the Medicare Physician Fee Schedule for CCM services furnished to Medicare patients living with two or more chronic conditions. CMS first established payment for CPT code 99490 to pay for at least 20 minutes of clinical staff time directed by a physician or other qualified healthcare professional per calendar month. Under CCM, patients receive a comprehensive care plan and 20 minutes a month or more of their dedicated medical professional's time for activities outside of their regular office visit, such as phone check-ins and the ability to reach someone from their care team 24-7 when they have an urgent need. There are other requirements to bill for CCM, and you can find that information on the CMS Care Management page with the website listed here. If you go to cms.gov and type in care management in the search engine, you'll be able to come up with this page with the frequently asked questions and fact sheets. Next slide, please. CMS has been working diligently to make rule changes that enable separate payment for more complex and time-intensive chronic care management services. CMS has also been working to significantly reduce the administrative burden by improving alignment with coding language, a simplified patient consent, and reduced documentation rules. So in response to feedback from healthcare professionals across the country, CMS added additional billing codes and an add-on code in January 2017 so clinicians could receive payment for spending additional time on more complex patients. Next slide, please. Here's a snapshot of the latest CCM codes as well as the clinical staff time that is required to bill for these codes. The codes that you use will be dependent on how complex a patient's needs are and the amount of clinical staff time being spent on the patient. Next slide, please. I want to point out that Rural health clinics and federally qualified health centers are also eligible to bill and receive payment for chronic care management services when using CPT code 99490 or with other payable services on an RHC or FQHC claim. So there is an MLN Matters that addresses CCM services for RHCs and FQHCs if you need additional information. To search that on the MLN page, it's number MM, as in Mary Mary, 9234. That's MM9234. Next slide, please. Next slide. This past spring, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services, along uh, with HRSA's Federal Office of Rural Health Policy, launched Connected Care, a chronic care management campaign. This is a national public education campaign that seeks to raise awareness of the benefits of chronic care management services among healthcare professionals and patients, specifically in rural areas and among racial and ethnic minority populations. Next slide, please. The Connected Care campaign has two primary audiences. First, we are targeting healthcare professionals, which include physicians, clinical nurse specialists, nurse practitioners, certified nurse midwives, physician assistants, as well as other clinical staff, such as social workers, who may be a part of the care management team. We are also seeking to reach Medicare and dually eligible beneficiaries with two or more chronic health conditions. Through Connected Care, we have placed a special focus on reaching underserved rural populations as well as racial and ethnic minority populations. This is a national campaign, so we are striving to reach every state, but with targeted outreach being conducted in four states, Georgia, New Mexico, Pennsylvania, and Washington State. Using Medicare claims data, we identified two markets, one rural county and one urban area within each of those four states to implement localized campaigns with the support of CMS and HRSA regional offices, as well as local healthcare professionals and grassroots partnerships. 
Next slide, please. As you can see here on this slide, the campaign includes a mix of outreach approaches, which include patient and provider education, multiple media activities, and partnership development. We have a comprehensive set of educational materials and resources available on our website that we've developed, and I'll show you that in the next slide. Next slide, please. We are excited about the enhancements that we've recently made to our Connected Care website that you can see here. It's go.cms.gov slash ccm. Our goal for this site is to be a one-stop shop for chronic care management with all of our new products as well as links to chronic care management resources such as the existing CMS care management page that I mentioned earlier as well as links to our past webinars and information on our upcoming webinars and events. As part of the initiative, we are offering new resources for healthcare professionals one of those resources is a web-based toolkit that is now available to download as a PDF on our website. Some of the items that are included in the toolkit are guides to getting started with CCM, how to talk to staff and patients about chronic care management, materials that explain what CCM is, who it's for, why it's beneficial, and how to bill for it, and links to other resources for you to include the fact sheets and FAQs and other chronic care management sample materials. We have a testimonial video that's coming soon that will target healthcare professionals that will share um, the experience of one of our local clinician champions um, and how she was able to implement chronic care management in her practice. We also have in-clinic posters available to display in doctor's offices as well as postcards that can be shared with patients that all highlight chronic care management and the benefits. And uh, we are also finalizing an animated video for patients that explains the benefits of chronic care management that, that you can also play in doctor's offices. And then we have flyers and posters that are available to order that are now on our CMS product ordering warehouse website. There's a link to that page on our website here. So if you go to go.cms.gov slash CCM um, and go to resources, you'll find the link to be able to go to the CMS product ordering warehouse page. Next slide, please. Partnerships are vital to the success of the Connected Care campaign with many of you here on the phone. Um, support from our partners is critical to raise awareness about the benefits of chronic care management services. We are also excited that we have a partner toolkit that's available on our website. Um, the toolkit is web-based and it's available to download as a PDF. It has suggested activities and information that you can use, such as drop-in language for articles, a slide deck template, as well as draft social media posts. So we would love to hear from you if you're interested in becoming a partner, um, have specific chronic care management questions, or if you want to share with us on uh, ways that you are implementing chronic care management in your practice, you can email us. Um, the email is listed here, ccm at cms.hhs.gov. Next slide, please. And here are some takeaways from today, um, so ways that you can get started and get involved. We encourage you to download and order our um, materials for your waiting rooms. Visit our Connected Care Hub, our website, and access our healthcare professional toolkit for more information. And become a partner in the Connected Care campaign. Um, and then if you have specific questions, we will have a Q&A session at the end of the call. Um, but if you have a specific question that's related to billing or maybe a little more complicated, I encourage you to email me in the CCM mailbox, ccm at cms.hhs.gov. And that will help us give some time to research your question and then be able to give you the best possible answer. Thank you so much. Thank you, Michelle. That was very helpful. We appreciate that presentation. We will now hear from Stores in the Field, and next up is Lauren Field. Good afternoon. My name is Lauren Field, and I'm the Chief Coordinated Care Officer and an RN for Our Care and Kentucky Care, a federally qualified health care center operating in rural Arkansas and rural western Kentucky. Next slide, please. 
Today I would like to speak to you about our chronic care management program, including our successes and the hurdles that we are working to overcome with this program. Next slide, please. We began chronic care management last November with only one nurse, next slide please, and added five additional RNs and two registered dietitians in January to expand chronic care management to all 41 of our clinics. Next slide please. We focus on five specific diagnoses for our program, diabetes, CHF, COPD, depression, and obesity at present. Currently, each educator has around 75 patients. We hope to reach full capacity by September of this year with each educator having 200 patients. Next slide, please. We provide each patient with a designated phone number directly to the educator from 8 to 5 and our on-call provider hotline after hours. Each patient that enrolls is sent a welcome packet and a chronic care management education book. We also provide the patient with a magnet for easy access to our phone number. Each patient has a patient-centered care plan based on their diagnosis and their needs. Next slide, please. We have experienced many successes as well as a few hardships while providing chronic care services to our rural population. When I asked the educators for some of their success stories, they were delighted to share the following stories with me. One of the nurses stated that she was making a monthly call on one of her patients who has a history of stroke and had recent other difficulties lately in his life. He reported that he had thoughts of harming himself. The patient said that he did not feel comfortable discussing this with his provider at the time. To make a long story short, the provider was made aware of the issue and actions were taken. The patient now voices that he enjoys and looks forward to speaking to the educator each month because he doesn't get out of his house much or have a social life. Sometimes our patients just need to know that we care about them and what is happening in their life. Next slide, please. Another success story came from the dietitian who, while talking with a patient, noticed that she had signs of depression. She was able to get her in with the provider and the patient was treating for her, treated for her diagnosis. The dietitian said the patient texted her to tell her of a six pound weight loss. She told her that she had stopped turning to food when she was depressed and was now taking control of her life. Next slide, please. Another success story was of a patient who had attempted to better her health numerous times without success. The dietitian stated, I first saw this patient for weight loss in September of last year and then did not see her again until January. She had no success in those first few months but wanted to try again. Today she came in and was all smiles. After four meetings, she had lost 17 pounds. She keeps a food diary, is more conscious of what she eats, exercises more frequently, and states she feels better all around with more stamina. She even looks like she's taking better care of herself. And with the help of a statin and diet, her cholesterol is within normal range. She wants to continue to lose weight and get off the statin drug. The moral of this story is if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Next slide. And a final success story came from a patient whose A1C went from 9.5 to 6.4. She lost 13 pounds and her COPD is improving. The educator stated that in the first interaction, the patient felt as if she knew everything about her disease process and had no time to learn. The patient reluctantly tried a few suggestions from the educator and began seeing big results. My team has learned that the toughest challenges are also the sweetest victories. Next slide. One problem that has seemed to be common among each nurse is keeping the patients for an extended length of time. We often have patients who enroll in CCM and utilize the services for one to two months and then we are unable to reach them. Often their phones are shut off or they have had to move quickly and we must discharge them until they return to the provider and their information is updated. Another issue is that as an FQHC, we bill CPT code 99490. We are not authorized at this time to bill the other chronic care management codes and many of our patients are complex and require as much as an hour each month. 
This hinders the nurse's ability to enroll new patients. The financial burden on our population is prevalent, and each educator runs the patient's eligibility prior to admitting them to make them aware of any copay or call. This also affects the number of admissions each educator has each month. Next slide. For our growing Hispanic population, we have a Spanish diabetes education book as well as brochures for each of the other chronic diseases on which we focus. We use optimal phone interpreter hotline for translation for our patients who do not speak English as well as the website freetranslation.com for the hearing impaired. We have two RNs that are currently taking Spanish classes to be able to better communicate. ADA also offers handouts for diabetes in Spanish that we've found to be very useful. We have Spanish-speaking employees in a growing number of our locations, which seems to be the best way to communicate. It seems that the patient is instantly more at ease to know that they can speak to someone face-to-face -face who understands exactly what they are trying to say. Next slide, please. As you can see, we are still learning every day. We learn through our successes and we learn through our hardships. But we know that each individual that we treat has their own set of circumstances with their own successes and hardships in life. As long as our focus remains on making each day better for that patient, we will succeed. Thank you. Thank you very much. Next, we'll hear from Allison Castleman. Thank you. Um, Hey everybody, um, I just want to take a few minutes to talk about our version of care navigation that we've implemented in Henry County, Tennessee as part of our HRSA Delta Rural Networks grant program. Um, it's based out of a hospital utilizing a care navigator who is a registered nurse with a background in case management. Right, next slide please. Um, upon admission to the hospital, all patients are screened using a variety of different data sets. Information on such things as comorbid conditions, past history of readmissions, income, insurance, and different things are pulled from either their demographics, the EMR history, and the nurse's admission assessment. This screening generates a report for the care navigator, which you can see in the middle of the screen there, that gives the patient a risk score for readmission back into the hospital, and then there's another score for identified skilled nursing facility need. If the patient scores high, the care navigator meets with the patient and the caregiver if possible to create a plan of care and um, for automated phone calls to begin at discharge if the patient is going home. If the patient's going to go to a skilled facility, the care navigator will still follow that patient for at least 30 days after discharge. If they get discharged from the skilled nursing facility before the end of that period, the care navigator picks them back up to be included in our care navigation process. Next slide, please. So this is, uh, we typically follow patients at discharge for about 30 days afterwards. Um, after the patient's discharge, they begin to receive automated phone calls that are tailored to them um, and based on their condition. Most patients typically receive calls three times a week. Um, but again, it is very tailored, so patients may have two times, it may be um, daily, just depends on that patient and their needs. They'll be asked to use their phone to enter their response to the questions. The questions are typically yes or no, and um, very um, good health literacy on those for the patient so they can understand easily. Um, and some others do include specific instructions, such as asking them to enter their weight if it's a CHS patient. If the patient enters a response that warrants a follow-up by the care navigator, it shows a red flag in our care navigation program. Next slide. So here's an example of the patient call dashboard that our care navigator would see within the system. You can see where the patient was called, uh, which questions were asked, and if the response was with in normal limits. The green boxes indicate an all good response and the red boxes indicate a need of follow up. So you can see this one, um, like here the patient was asked if they had a fever. The box indicated indicates it's green, so the patient must have indicated that they did not have a fever. However, plenty of rest was flagged as a response that the patient did not get plenty of rest, which warranted a follow up by the care navigator to make sure the patient was doing okay. Next slide. 
Here you can see where the care navigator contacted the patient to see what was going on based on those flagged responses. And she just entered some notes here so that you could see um, her responses so that we can track kind of what's going on with that patient. Um, many of these, the patient was receiving home health services, and so we can make sure the home health um, was coming, that they were seeing the patient, that they were addressing that um, so that the patient had what they needed so they didn't end up back in the hospital and they were getting the services that they needed. Next slide. Other services that our Care Navigator provides um, includes transportation assistance if they're having trouble getting to or from their um, physician appointments, scheduling or rescheduling of appointments, referrals to other community programs, and especially communication to and between hospitals, providers, specialists, and other community agencies as needed by that patient. Next slide. So our program has been in place for about a year now. We started with um, the orthopedic patients. We've been gradually working in those um, core measure patients, just depending on some readmissions and need. So we're starting to really see some outcomes for our program. And we've seen a significant decrease in orthopedic readmissions, due in part to the increased accountability placed on those patients through the self-reporting system. We've also seen an increased adherence to follow-up appointments and an increase in communication and accountability with community providers and physician offices. This program really helps keep everyone working towards the same goals with a patient, and no one wants to be that one provider that drops the ball. Um, so we have, you know, making sure that the home health comes when they say they're going to come, um, and that the patient is really getting what they need. Next slide, please. And while all this sounds great, of course, there's always going to be barriers for anything uh, with these programs. And so since most of this is phone-based, uh, we do have some difficulties, like with hearing-impaired patients that might have difficulty understanding the phone calls. Um, some patients may choose not to answer. They don't want to be honest because they know if they um, put in that they've gained five pounds, they know somebody's going to call them and follow up and want to know um, what they're doing for that, or they've taken their medications, that kind of stuff. Um, and we do occasionally have patients that ask to be removed from the program just because of the frequency of the phone calls. And that makes them reluctant um, to join other assistance programs throughout um, that we may offer that could be beneficial to them. So we are still working for those um, through some of those barriers, but all in all, it has been um, a rewarding program with some pretty good outcomes so far. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We've heard from a couple of local perspectives on how CCM can be implemented. They're meant to share approaches and not be prescriptive. This can be implemented in a variety of different ways if you follow the CMS guidelines. It's also showing how CCM is helping communities as well as the HCPs and patients in those communities. Now we're going to turn to talking about the regional perspective. Beth Charlotte Kaplan will be sharing this. Beth, can you please start presenting if you're available? Can you hear me now? Yes, we can. Thank you so much. All right. I'm so sorry about that. I don't quite know what happened. Um, but I'm so excited to offer some CMS regional support to all of you joining us today. I've enjoyed the opportunity to work with the Philadelphia and the Northeastern Pennsylvania chapters of NON on a few local outreach events, highlighting several CMS initiatives. It's been really rewarding to hear feedback from our local partners especially my nurse and nurse practitioner colleagues, regarding their work in chronic care management. You can see from a nurse care manager from Portland Adventist that this work has not only been helpful to their patients, but it's also been personally rewarding to the care manager. 
And in the second example you see on the slide, this work has been beneficial from a financial perspective to a practice and allowed them in New Jersey to dedicate more staff to do this important work. I'm personally excited about this because it offers an opportunity for many different members of the healthcare team in a practice to directly impact patients and improve care. Next slide, please. Next slide. Here at CMS, we know that it's not always easy to start a new program, and you may still have some questions or need support. CMS National Headquarters is based in Baltimore, Maryland. However, we have 10 regions shown above with an office in each that serve as boots on the ground, so to speak, to support the implementation of all CMS programs. Next slide. Each region has a chronic care management and connected care initiative point of contact if you need some guidance or assistance in spreading the word about the connected care initiative. In some cases, these contacts may be able to help you in planning regional outreach and awareness events locally. Each region's office is listed above with the states included in each region and the point of contact's name, email address, for Connected Care. Please feel free to reach out to them at that email address if you have any questions or are in need of additional support. Thank you, Beth. And now we're going to open it up to questions and answers. The first question is about whether the presentation will be made available. And the answer to that is yes. We will have this presentation available on the CMS OMH website. And it will be available for download. We'll also send an email after that is available so that we can tell you and prompt you to go to the website to download it. The next question is for Allison. Were you billing your services as CCM? How did the patients react? to co-pays, and how did you establish the care plan in the hospital? Hey, um, we currently do not bill for this um, program, but we do have hopes of, in the future, incorporating this with our local providers and physician-owned practices um, to establish this with the chronic care management. Um, I do know the co-pays is something that we've kind of wor not worried about, but um, you know, definitely considered because most of the patients we deal with in these rural areas, um, that, that's a big deal for them. I missed there was another part of that question. Oh, the care plan. Um, most of it is disease-based. Um, and again, it pulls that risk factor whenever you see in there that talks about why they're high risk for readmission, if it's um, income-based, if it, um, they've been readmitted to the hospital in the last several times, and then that specific patient just adherence to their medical conditions and their medications, and then it's also altered as the patient is, um, as we interact with them. You know, we might start it for two days a week, and when that patient's having a lot of difficulty, we might increase it. So it really just depends on a lot of different patient factors. Thank you very much. The next question is for Michelle. Where can I access the materials for the Connected Care campaign? Hi, Monique. Uh, thanks for that question. Um, the materials for the Connected Care campaign on, are on our website at go.cms.gov slash ccm. You can also get a link on that website um, to our product ordering warehouse to be able to order products straight from CMS as well. Thank you. Thank you. Lauren, the next question is for you. How were you able to evaluate and assess patient satisfaction, and how did you collect their feedback and those quotes on um, how the program was helping them? We provide a pre and post survey to all patients and then we assess them quarterly. So every three months they receive a survey in the mail. Thank you. 
The next question is for Michelle. Do automated calls count towards the required time spent on CCM? Uh, thanks, Monique. Um, that's a great question. So automated calls, monthly calls, um, can count towards um, that time to bill for CCM. Um, again, if, if you're doing chronic care management services that are 20 minutes or more per month, if you have someone from your care team that's making monthly phone call check-ins to that patient, yes, that can count toward the threshold of, of the time. Thank you. Another question regarding time spent. Does time spent calling vendors and specialists to coordinate care contribute to the 20-minute minimum time spent in order to bill for CCM? I'm sorry, Minnie, can you, time spent toward vendors and what else? Specialists. Specialists, Specialist. yes, yes. And, and again, so if you look at um, the frequently asked questions and the fact sheets that are on the CMS care management page, you'll see more specific information um, on some of the ways that, and information that can help you to see what can be counted towards that time. Um, I do want to point out that the 20 minutes is assumed that there are 15 minutes of billing practitioner time, um, so keep that in mind. So anything above that can be um, activities that are part of other folks on the care team, if you will. Thank you. The next question is for Allison. How are you able to coordinate between hospitals um, and specialists? What do you do to find that information and to log that? Most of our patients, of course, have, just like any patient discharge from the hospital, it's going to have those appointments scheduled um, and identified before they ever leave the hospital. So a lot of our role is just to make sure that, um, because we do have that information since we're within the hospital system, to make sure that they are going that the discharge information got sent to them, if they missed their appointment for some reason, or if their provider, um, their regular provider refers them. And we just make sure that we're doing a lot of follow-up to make sure that they do attend to those appointments and that those providers do have the information that they need. Thank you. The next question is for Michelle. How can an organization become a partner in this campaign? Thanks, Monique. Um, if an organization is interested in becoming a partner, um, I would say the first step would be to go to the website go.cms.gov slash CCM and download the Partner Toolkit. Um, that will give you some really good helpful ways to be able to support the campaign um, and have some really good information to use. And then give us uh, a shout at CCM at CMS.hhs gov and let us know you're interested and we will get back to you as soon as we can. The next question is asking us about resources to help healthcare professionals and health systems implement CCM. We can direct you to the Connected Care Resource Hub. There is an HCP toolkit there available for you to download and share amongst your colleagues. It also has a list of all of the requirements um, on that site so that you can see what is permissible as well as the FAQs. So the next question can be answered by any of our folks from the field. Um, do you experience issues with loss to follow up? What strategies have you found to be successful to overcome those barriers? Let's say I'll call on Allison for that one. Okay, can you just uh, loss to follow up as in patients not following up to their appointments? That's correct. Okay, um, of, of course that's an issue um, as anywhere, and I'm sure patients have um, experienced that, especially in rural areas. Um, we really try to work with them to make sure um, if they're not going, why are you not going to get that? Is it because you don't want to pay the copay at the provider's office? You don't have transportation assistance. Um, you don't like that provider. And so we really try to get to the nitty gritty and if you know we can either provide them financial assistance for transportation or we can say, hey, let us set it up for you. Um, 
to help get those patients and then again following back up to make sure did you finally go hey let us schedule it again and let us we're really going to you know whatever you need um, to really try to break down those barriers as to why they're not going um, so that we can help them make sure that they do go thank you the next question is for beth and or michelle um, how can an organization in uh, one of the states get materials in relation to the campaign that they can use to support their community education efforts? So Beth, I was waiting. I wasn't sure if you were going to answer first. Um, I think they can get materials a couple of ways. So if you're in one of the regions, um, Beth shared a slide that will be available to you um, in the future on our website that has a list of the regional contacts for chronic care management. So feel free to reach out to any one of those folks. And then, as I've mentioned, um, if you want to order products directly, you can go to the website and there's a link to the CMS product ordering website to get materials there as well. Um, Beth, did you want to chime in? No, I was actually hoping that you would say exactly that. Thank you. <laughs> Great. We're on the same page. I will also mention um, Beth and others in the regions are planning to be at some regional um, activities, uh, maybe some health fairs or some uh, conferences coming up. So um, be on the lookout there as well. And they'll have materials there too. Thank you. And just a quick overview again on some of those materials. There are materials that can help you uh, educate your patients while they're in the waiting room as well as uh, in office. So there are postcards um, and there are also posters that you can hang in your waiting room. Um, and then in terms of educating some of the staff on CCM, there's the HCP toolkit as well. And there'll be more activities and uh, materials available online on the website. The next question is for Michelle. Can you please explain the 15 minutes of billing practitioner time in relation to the 20 minutes for min monthly billing? Um, sure. Let me clarify that. And so the, the 15 minutes of billing practitioner time is that initial uh, 20 minutes. So there, there are certain clinicians that are able to, to be billing practitioners. So that's the, the doctor the RN, the nurse practitioner, um, and others. And those are outlined in the fact sheets. So those activities that the, that billing practitioner is doing um, needs to be the foundation, that 15 minutes. And then any time after that that's done by the clinical staff, such as um, looking, reviewing um, medical records or doing you know, other coordination activities is in addition to that 15 minutes. So hopefully that helps clarify. Thank you, Michelle. The next question is for Lauren. Do you have any uh, lessons learned or practices that you are using to capture time spent on each patient when there are non-CCM employees providing care for billable services? We do not at this time have anything for the ones that are not CCM nurses. The nurses do go into the clinics once a week and they speak with each provider about the patient. So that time, of course, is counted, but not counted toward the billing purposes, just counting it in the sense of, of what the nurse is doing in the field. But as far as the time that the providers spend, you know, all that we have is what they do in the clinic and what they do with each nurse. I hope that helps. I hope that's not confusing. Thank you. Uh, this this is Beth, and I might be able to um, help here too. I can tell you that some of our partners have actually incorporated this program um, similar to the way lawyer bills for services, and they use a stopwatch to start and stop um, when they're providing care that falls under this program. Thank you, Beth. Monique, this is Michelle. May I go back to the question um, about the 15 minutes for the billing practitioner? And just to clarify further, so that's for um, billing code, CPT code 99490 um, for a regular non-complex 
that's what assumes 15 minutes of work by the billing practitioner. So the additional more complex codes and the add-on code are for additional time. Hopefully, again, that further clarifies that. Thank you. And Michelle, one other clarification. Does a patient have to be spoken to every month? What about the times when you leave a voicemail? Can that count? Um, so that's a great question, Monique. Um, and I will say, so first of all, no, patients do not have to, first of all, you don't have to speak to patients every month. You don't have to make contact with patients every month. Monthly um, is probably, it's the maximum that you can contact patients. We have received that question at CMS, um, and it's sort of it's sort of a gray area. I mean, you certainly, if you are making repeated calls to a patient and you don't reach them, you certainly want to be paid for that time that you've um, made towards them, uh, towards the effort of getting in contact with them. But if you, again, it's a gray area in that, you know, I guess, use your best judgment. If you're making a phone call and it's 30 seconds and you haven't reached that patient, I'm sure there are other time that you have towards that patient that you may be able to count. So um, I'll just leave it at there that um, I think it's going to be a case-by-case -case basis. Thank you. I'm going to open the floor to either Lauren, Alice, or Beth to answer and contribute to this response. Um, do you have any best practices for enrolling patients in CCM, and how do you market it to them? I can tell you what we do is that we go by patient roster for the patients, patients that have two or more of the diagnoses that we focus on, and we send those patients mailers and ask them to contact us if they have any interest. And that's the best way that we've found to enroll patients. We also have flyers up in all of our clinics that allow the patient to contact us. This is Beth. Uh, it's, sorry, this is Allison. I was just going to chime in on that real quick. Um, while we currently don't bill for CCM, um, the way we enroll people in our navigation program, again, y'all saw that um, risk factor that's sent over to the care navigator. If the patient falls within that risk category for readmission, um, our care, nav care navigator actually goes up to the floor, um, presents them with some information about the program, tells them a little bit how it works, what the structure of it is, works on that care plan if they agree. Um, and then kind of, you know, follows back up at discharge just to make sure that everything is okay there. So we get them kind of while they're a captive audience here. So that works out pretty well for us. This is Beth. I can share that one practice that we've um, worked with shared that they also had some patients concerned about the copayment or not understanding um, that responsibility. And CMS is unable to address that issue because it was written into legislation that way. But what that practice did was took time to um, describe what care management services really are and how important they are and how time consuming they are. And they found that when they did that with patients, they got better buy-in and agreement and it seemed to lessen the concern or objection regarding coinsurance for some patients. Thank you very much. So the next question uh, relates to enrolling patients and similar to how do we identify those um, what is the best way to identify CCM patients if you're just starting to implement the program? Are providers doing any referrals to care managers? So this is Michelle. I'm wondering if maybe um, Lauren or Allison can talk to how they've ident been able to identify patients, particularly Lauren, in your practice. Our providers do refer CCM patients to us also. They send medical messages, flags, or emails to the um, CCM nurse in their clinic. 
and they seem to have a good relationship with them and that works out well. So right now that's how we do it, just the medical messages mostly and through the flags that they um, send referrals to enroll those patients. This is Beth. Lots of patients have been identified through uh, electronic health records in primary care office settings by office managers running a report uh, of diagnosis codes and comparing that to eligibility for CCM services and targeting patients that way, either when they come in for their next appointment or an outreach call is made to discuss services and then bring the patient in um, to start development of a care plan. Hope that helps. Thank you. There is a question about implementing CCM and tools to help. Um, the question is, do we have any sample care plans? We would like to direct you to the HCP toolkit. It does have an outline of the elements that may be considered for a care plan. The next question is for Michelle. It relates to who can be considered clinical staff. For example, can a medical assistant or a LVN help to support care management? Um, sure. Thanks, Monique, for that question. Um, so in, in the FAQs that are on the care management page, um, there is actually question number one um, that it asks who qualifies as clinical staff. Um, so it really varies um, state to state. Um, it depends on state law, licensure, and scope of practice. So that's not really a particular question that, that I can specifically answer. Um, so I, I'm, I will just say that it does vary from state to state as to who can be considered um, clinical staff to be able to count your time towards um, chronic care management under the billing practitioner. And maybe others on the call can um, clarify that a little bit more, maybe from where they're, they're coming from. Thank you, Michelle. The other question is related to uh, whether a patient who has diabetes and is on dialysis able to be considered eligible for CCM. Michelle, if you can take this question. Sure, I'll start. And um, again, others feel free to chime in. Um, again, so under chronic care management, it's for patients, um, Medicare beneficiaries with two or more chronic conditions. Um, you know, given this condition, I'm sure there are other comorbidities. Um, so more than likely, this patient probably does have two chronic conditions and that would be able um, to, to be supported if this person is um, a Medicare patient. Thank you. This next question is for you, Michelle, as well. When the patients are dual, dually eligible, how does the billing of Medicaid work for the co-pays and deductibles? So that's a great question. Um, and so again, that's going to vary from state to state, depending on um, the state Medicaid program. Um, as a CMS perspective, um, you know, the hope is if someone is dually eligible, if they're a Medicare and have Medicaid as well, um, the copayment and coinsurance should be covered. And I say should, given that we have heard um, instances and been getting feedback that there are patients that are getting bills. Um, if that's the case, we'd like to hear about it so that we can um, figure out what's going on in that particular state. Um, so does that answer the question, Monique? And are there others that want to chime in on that? Yes, it does. Thank you. Well, we have reached the conclusion of our webinar, What Nurses Should Know About Chronic Care Management. We invite you to visit us on our Chronic Care Resource Hub at go.cms.gov slash CCM. We are interested in staying connected with you as well as um, looking for partners who are interested in implementing CCM and educating others about connected care in their communities. 
please do stay on the webinar briefly for a few questions. Uh, we'd love to hear your feedback, as well as if there's anything that you'd like to reach us for or have any questions, please email us at ccm at cms.hhs.gov. Thank you so much for your time.